Yo, it's Bill from Pop Culture Pause Screen with another episode of Bonus Stage, and today we are going to take a look at Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2 Collector's Edition, as well as a pair of nifty statues I picked up from eBay of Mithra and Pyra. So these are two separate figures. Um, that actually they don't connect together, but the bases um, with those diamond shapes allow you to put them closer together. Um, but they came as a pair when I ordered them, and the level of detail, because these statues weren't they weren't terribly expensive, but the level of detail on them um, I thought was incredible, uh, considering these are not a they're not plain characters in the game. There's a lot going on with the, the belts and the straps and the detail on the sword. So as you can see there, um, every little detail has been carved into these statues, uh, including like the scarves and bits and pieces like that on Pyra. Moving over to Mithra, um, with again the massive sword that sits quite comfortably in her hands. Um, there as well as like all the detail and all of the cloth and the hair um, very very impressive um, considering how cheap they were really and a lot, a lot of times these statues can be really really expensive and they look great standing next to each other in front of the collector's editions so um, let's take a closer look at those collector's editions and starting off with Xenoblade Chronicles 2 um, as you see there's a sleeve that goes over the top and then you um, open them up and the when these collector's editions come with art books there's there's other art books and then there's this one the amount of detail and um, the designs of each of these pages are filled with the brim of uh, characters and, and artwork some use some not and it was just incredible. And even like the 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 pages, the outer cover of the pages has a sword in, engraved on it, uh, on the design. Moving on to the steel tin that came with the collector's edition, um, unique artwork that goes with that. Very very nice. Um, and if you open them up, there's also whoops art, art, artwork from inside as well. Um, and there's a good shot of what you get with the game. And if you haven't played Xenoblade Chronicles 2 on a Switch, what are you doing? Um, it's a great, great game and one of the best RPGs ever made. Um, only probably outdone by its first game in my opinion, Xenoblade Chronicles uh, 1, and I got the definitive edition, I was lucky enough to order that. Again comes with a steel tin of the two um, giant mechs that are fighting um, at the beginning, the Mechonus and the Bionis. Inside you get a uh, code for digital soundtrack, but I probably won't use that. Um, and artwork of some of the mechons in the game. Taking that over you get the uh, vinyl, but I haven't got a vinyl player, so let's put that to one side. Moving on to the poster that you get as well, very nice. And again, a massive, massive artwork book with so much stuff. Every page, I mean you could spend um, hours just skimming through this book and seeing the level of detail that's in here. Uh, every character, every item, every weapon. Xenoblade, the team, the Xenoblade team just takes so much time building these collector's editions and making these art books worth having. So yeah, there's uh, my Xenoblade uh, collection. Um, very happy with that. Now, Killer Instinct, anybody who knows me close knows that Killer Instinct is the only fighting game that topples Street Fighter for me because of its diverse set of characters and uh, music and levels and battle system. And um, my favourite character from that franchise is Folgore. Now, this is a, actually a really cheap figure, um, which I, I'm impressed with the level of details depending on how cheap it was. They were released with the game's launch and I don't think they did particularly well so I picked one up under bargain. Um, it comes with a few codes for the game for colours and stuff but what I'm really impressed about is the level of detail like underneath the metal platings. Um, there's a few sort of shame bits like that to make the blades of Fulgore um, see-through they kind of made it rubbery and they kind of touch and don't really look like blades sometimes which is a bit of a shame 
But the wires and the metal plating and the articulation of, of the armor of Fulgore I thought was really impressive with this. So I do think there's probably a much better Fulgore out there to collect. But as far as the price goes, I was really chuffed to get this and uh, add it to the collection. If there's a franchise that is going to topple Zelda for me, it is definitely Metroid. I have loved every single game in the franchise. And there's not one bad game in my opinion. Um, and I was really happy and surprised on Christmas when um, a friend of mine got me both of these figures as a Christmas present. I think that's the great thing about collecting figures and statues is that when you open up presents um, on Christmas you can always be quite nicely surprised by what you're going to get. And uh, my collection of Metroid figures here is really, really good. And why do I keep them in the box? Just look at the detail on the box there. I mean, I know you can pose the figure to look like this stuff, but it just doesn't look as nearly as good as having the, the packaging. And uh, this Zero Suit Samus uh, statue was just so beautifully detailed. And um, it looks just so good in the box on its own, I couldn't, couldn't possibly take it out. But they were both imported from Japan, um, and uh, I mean look, it's it's just such a great box and figure collection to keep as is, um, and it, it, you don't take away any of the, the display purposes by keeping them in the box like this. Um, so I'm more than happy just to have them displayed as they are. Such great packaging, great figures, uh, really well detailed, uh, one of my favourite, uh, well, my absolute favourite Nintendo character. So, um, anyone who's old enough to remember these things, these are Tazos, uh, a form of Pogs <laughs> that was in the collection, and I've got them in a really nice folder and a complete set. So I'm quite happy to show you these. Uh, the inside of the cover there, as you've just seen, actually gives you different ways to play. Now anyone who remembers you just sort of stack them up and hit them with a plastic slammer, as they call it, plastic disc, to topple them over. But Tazos had loads of other ways you could play and use them, and it was all detailed on the actual cover. Um, but as far as these collections go, I always thought the Tazos collection was just so vibrant and colourful. Um, and they're also quite difficult to get, so the Taz ones you could only get in Doritos. Um, and I, I hated Doritos back when I was a kid, but um, I sort of muscled through to complete the set. But I love Looney Tunes, and I thought this was a really nice collection to sort of keep. Oh, there, there's my faithful Porky Pig. Uh, I won many a Tazo uh, from my friends with that one, that's why it's a bit more scuffed. And it also comes with this pretty nifty slammer which uh, anyone who does have this collection, I don't often see the Slammer, so um, that's, you know, a complete set of the first series of Tazos there. Um, but no, a great little set there, love the Looney Tunes, and uh, anyone who collects Pogs uh, might remember these. Now, a quick look at five figures from um, my Separates collection, again all boxed. Uh, during my time in game, um, they used to get these figures in as Altair there from Assassin's Creed. And uh, they were reasonably cheap, but again, very detailed, as you can see there, with many bits of uh, weaponry and, and smaller pieces. That is one benefit of keeping them in the box so you don't lose those pieces. There's Marcus Phoenix from Gears of War. Um, yeah, you, they used to come in deliveries all the time, and uh, it was quite good to sort of have the pick of the bunch. Um, not so great <laughs> if you're a fan of collecting figures, it's just every every week you'd get a load of new figures to sort of tempt you away from your paycheck. Duke Nukem, hail to the king baby. Released alongside the game Duke Nukem Forever to capitalise on that game's release. It's a bit of retail magic there to help you part with your money on release day and take advantage of that. Clearly worked on me. But this one is probably my absolute favourite, the Tyrant, the last boss from Resident Evil 1. The, oh, it just looks so good. I mean, even through, I, I think these were about £20 each. 
just look at the detail and the the carving of of the the figure here. It lo literally looks exactly like it does in it. Well, maybe even better than what it does in the game. And I didn't ever see these other ones, the Hunter, Crimson Head, Zombie, and Liquor. But if I ever do see them, I'd love to collect, collect them and sort of complete my set. Um, but the, just the Tyrant, when it came in the box, I was like, wow, it just looks so good. Um, from one character that looks absolutely tremendous to another one that looks okay but not brilliant, um, Lara Croft Tomb Raider from the Underworld game. I just thought that the face of this one just looked a little off and they could have done a lot more. Um, but I do feel that the t this Tomb Raider trilogy, uh, Legends, Underworld and Anniversary, is the best that Tomb Raider has ever been in my opinion. Um, and I picked this one up uh, as part of that appreciation for that series. But yeah, just uh, five box figures that I've picked up from my time in game. You don't always need to spend a fortune to get some decently detailed figures. Now, there are expensive figures out there, and they're sometimes you look at them and you think, yeah, that's detailed, but whatever maniac decided to take this scene from Advent Children and try and make a statue out of it and succeed, I applaud them. I mean, what were they thinking? How they managed to put this together is beyond me, but it was a very expensive figure that actually comes in two pieces, one with Cloud and one with Sephiroth, um, and you can actually l l stand them next to each other like I have here to make it look like one big figure. And even today, I've had this for many years, even today I look at this figure and I still see levels of detail that I've never seen before. It's an incredible piece um, and I was so happy that, um, again, a friend of mine bought the first part, Cloud, and then when I was like, "What? this this looks like there's some, something more to it, and looking in the, in the inserts that came with the box, I was like, oh my god, it comes from Sephiroth as well. Um, I had to get the other piece just to complete it. Um, and it is one of the prizes of my trophy room. Um, it's just it's just so crazy. I mean, how it all stands together and every angle of this figure just shows and paints a different picture from that scene. Um, and there is very few, if any, bad angles that you can see from this figure um, as I pan around to sort of show as much as I can of it. Um, whether you like the film Advent Children or not, that this is bit pictated from, you can't deny that this is one of the coolest scenes from that movie and also that epic battle between the two of them. Um, and the fact that I've got it in a statue form is just, you know, just makes me so, so, so happy. Um, so yeah, and it's very difficult because of the size of this thing to sort of get everything in one shot. So I've sort of changed the camera around to sort of show you just how tall this figure is. And as you can see there, there's the two bases side by side to show that they are two separate figures. Um, and all these bits sort of, they, they're actually in one solid chunk, but um, they do connect together to make this epic, epic figure. So that's it from me, Bill from Pop Culture Pause Screen. Um, thanks for checking out this episode of Trophy Room. If you want to see more bonus stage or anything else from Pop Culture Pause Screen, stick around for the continue screen that's coming up in a moment and click one of those videos. Um, and I will see you around soon. Take care.